Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chain Design Channel. Today we are going to look into this antique jewelry inspiring and see how we can flow the uh, line or the design from the top of the setting to the body of the shank. Are you ready? Let's get started. We are going to starting with whatever cabochon stone that you have. If you have um, happen to have the irregular cabochon, you can check out my course on the stone setting that show you how to make a cabochon stone and also make a bezel set for it. Let's go to the front view and we want to do a ring. Let's set it up the diameter for 16 millimeter and that will be the ring size for what we have. We're going to move the cabochon down to whatever the position that you think it's good for your design. And we're going to quickly to make a setting out of it. For the setting, I'm going to the top view and basically I want to draw a sphere set it up the center right in the middle just make it into whatever size like that and we are going to use the gumball and we're gonna stretch that sphere coming into a good thickness i would like to have somewhere about 0.8 millimeter for this um, this setting so you can see this is a gap is right there roughly about 0.8 millimeter and we want to move it up at the front view and at the same time we want to scale it down as well in one direction so now we have some sort of a rounded base sitting over there if we are going to make it for printing you want to make sure that you cut it straight down so you can have the stone to fit in in this case i just want to have a rendering so i basically going to make a copy of the stone and then using the bowling difference this out of the stone as our cutter so then we get something like that make sure that if you are looking at the render view you're going to see this is not much of a definition there we can give a tiny radius let's say set it up for something like a 0.1 and we want to do here all the way around so you can tell really quickly it give a shadow on the rendering so it will make your rendering look much more realistic like this okay so we are doing the ring for most like when it is finished setting and what it need to look like now we have this setting uh, done over there we are going to design something on the shank for the shank what i like to do is i'm gonna come over to the side and lock this one and so this is the curve that we have i basically going to creating a profile for the ring profile i'm going to use the conic corner and we are going to starting with the center right at the quadrant and pick it up whatever size you think that you like and we are going to move it this one back to the top we just need to make sure it's not hanging anywhere outside so let me go ahead to rebuild this curve and we want to rebuild into the 12 point so and we can pick up the two on the bottom it's kind of moving in a little bit so it's nothing hanging outside if this is the shape that you like that's okay if it is not we can always add it into the ideal shape that you like so now we have that one we can simply have that one mirror to the bottom and from there we can edit a little bit more maybe you do not want it to be so wide you want it tapered down so we're gonna bring down something like this so let's go ahead with the sweep one rail we're gonna click this is the rail this is the curl section make sure the arrow is aligned and facing the same direction and we also want to close the sweep make sure you record history as well so we can change it later now if you look at this one you feel like this is too much of a dip over there you want to have this one a little bit taller we can come over here and use the 1d scale and we want to scale this up for example like this and the, the form will follow it uh, to whatever the position that you like and also it might be too thick so I want to scale it down a little bit to make it more elegant so the same thing on the bottom it's going to be like that okay so now everything is set we are going to design those um, 
wire foam on the shank. So first I like to do is to extract the ISO curve. We want to extract some ISO curve. Uh, one is right in the middle and we want to have a couple more. So one is going to be somewhere about here and one is going to be somewhere about there. And we are going to unlock this one. Let me do the same thing. We're going to extract an ISO curve. We're going to extract the ISO curve. The first one is going to be here. The second one is right in the middle. The third one is a little bit on the bottom. And you can always, you know, adjust it later on if the gap is not exactly what you like. This is all the curve that we have here. So I'm going to come over to the right view and kind of give a, a good guess about where is the area I'm going to trim. So let me turn off the object and just have this is easier to see. So what I like to do is using this circle to trim off any of the area right in the middle. Okay, so we don't need that as well. So this is what we have left. Um, we are going to use the command, it's called blend. So you're going to blend from here to here. And you're going to blend from here to here. And you're going to blend from here to here. All right, so now we have all those curves. Let's go ahead to join all of them. Okay, so this is the curve that we have. We don't need to have anything passed to the middle. So I'm going to draw a straight line because we're going to mirror it later. Uh, so with this one, we're going to trim this off. To make it even better, uh, what we would like to do is actually rebuild all those three curves into something that's not changing the form too much. So let's turn on the ring that we have and see how much it is attached to this area. Let's go ahead to pipe it. Uh, we want we don't want to have any cap, so the cap is equal not, uh, the cap is equal none. And the thickness I would like to keep it as a radius 0.5 and see what happened. So now we have these things right there. Look like my ring is a little bit too fat for it. Uh, so in that case, I might need to like start over uh, to make it less fatty. So once we have finished that, we also need to finish the bottom of the ring shank. So I will, if you like the result, you're gonna extract the ISO curve again on this surface. And you wanna make sure that you uh, endpoint is touching those endpoints so you can have something like this. So that create the bottom of the ring shank. We are going to use those curve and we are going to pipe it again. Make sure the cap is none so we can join it later. All right. So now with this one, let's go ahead and pick up all those pipe and let's join it. If everything look good to you, you go to the top view and you want to go mirror the image to the other side and at the same time we pick up all six of them and mirror to the other side as well. That's how we can get uh, this ring. Apparently it is a little bit too fat there. Maybe I should start it with something a little bit smaller and with a little bit decoration with the B. Uh, or you can set the stone. This is Antique Inspire Cabochon Ring. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and comment and don't forget to subscribe it with the little bell is on. So that will thank you for watching. I'll see you next.